because the immune response is a double-edged sword. Okay? It's a very good thing, but it's dangerous. It does, if, if to simplify <laughs> things, it does two main things. One is to generate antibodies. Okay? Most of us heard about antibodies. It's important for immunity against viruses, bacteria. But it also has an arm of cells, specialized cells, that uh, can kill other cells. All right? So, in previous clinical trials aimed at vaccinating against Alzheimer's, these particular cells penetrated the brain and caused inflammation. They caused more damage than good and killed some of the individuals that were vaccinated. So that's a bad thing, right? <clears throat> we don't want to vaccinate people and cause uh, even a small proportion of uh, death. It's not worth it. So, that's a bad arm of the immune response. That's a good arm. We want to generate antibodies. And some clinic, well, two clinical trials uh, recently uh, were shown that uh, administering antibodies against amyloid beta to patients uh, exhibit a, a beneficial effect to some extent. Okay. I'm saying to some extent because as in many other experiments, <coughs> These antibodies were given to people that already have Alzheimer's. Now, I told you, people that already have Alzheimer's, a significant portion of their uh, brain tissue is dead. So, the, the, the ability to, to prevent further loss is, is reduced. We want to initiate these experiments much earlier. Okay. So, what do we do? We do a uh, vaccination. Uh, Tommy Rilouz here uh, from my lab did uh, uh, most of the work that I'm uh, showing you. Now, I'm sorry about that, but it doesn't show everything, so I'll try to fill in. But in general, we do a very cool, we use a very cool technique in our lab. We use something called a gene gun. It's actually a gene used for peaceful purposes, which fires Okay, which fires gold particles covered with DNA into our skin, well, not to our skin, but to uh, the skin of mice, okay? And, and this DNA translates in skin cells into protein, not other protein uh, than the amyloid beta, okay? So we vaccinate against this bad guy, this amyloid beta, and in a lengthy process, doesn't matter exactly uh, what happens there, it is presented to immune cells, which generate antibodies. <clears throat> now, this particular vaccine that we generate only generates antibodies, and not the, those bad immune cells that previously penetrated the brain of individuals that were vaccinated, killing them. Okay, so we only generate antibodies. Now, indeed, after a couple of months, high levels of antibodies are generated in the bodies of uh, the mice that we tested. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we test this vaccine on Down syndrome mice. So you would be surprised to know that people generated a Down syndrome model in mice. Now it's very important for us in drug development and vaccine development to have a model, a model animal, because we cannot test everything on humans, right? We, I already told you about the, the fact that clinical trials in humans can end up tragically. Okay. Now, for the, for the physicians here amongst us, just uh, uh, mind that uh, uh, the antibodies that this vaccine generates binds to oligomeric amyloid beta as well as aggregated amyloid beta. So we're cool about that. <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, now, these mice, right? I mentioned that we test things on mice. Now, how do we test cognition in mice? Right? They can't speak, right? They can't calculate. What can they do? You, you remember that the people with Alzheimer's have a great difficulty in knowing where they are, okay? To different extents, in different stages. However, we can, that we can test in mice. So, this task is a T maze, okay? Imagine that you just uh, about to uh, exit from a corridor, and you can choose whether you go to the right arm or to the left arm of that hole, okay? Now, mice are uh, uh, curious, just like most of the humans. Now, if they went first to the right hole, next time that we put them in the same, same situation, they would like to go to the left hole. 
Okay, because they know there's nothing on the right horn. <laughs> so that's, that's exactly what we do. And as you can see, mice that we vaccinated exhibit a high uh, proportion of uh, uh, going to the right, to the proper arm in this task, just as normal wild type mice will do. However, Down syndrome mice that weren't vaccinated do not show that. So they still go to that arm that they already visited. So I'm just showing you that, that to you so that you can understand that very similar phenotypes to what we see in humans, we can see actually also in mice. And we, and we did you know, way more tasks and tests than that. This is just an example. So the, the vaccine, the vaccine, and we actually work on several vaccines that we develop, they exhibit a significant antibody production against amyloid beta, which binds the bad uh, uh, fragments, variants of the, of the amyloid beta, of that bad protein. They improve the cognitive capacity of uh, mice that we vaccinate. And it allows us an opportunity to develop a vaccine for Alzheimer's disease while um, uh, providing an opportunity to help ameliorate the cognitive uh, condition of Down syndrome. Okay, that's important for us. Now, in addition to uh, preventing the or attempting at uh, delaying the onset of the disease, we also uh, attempted early diagnosis of the disease so that as early as the 50s, we can understand whether a person will or exhibit a initiation of the disease before he even knows it. So what is the challenge? What's the challenge? The challenge is that the, the disease is unpredictable in over 95% of the individuals that will have it. We, we just don't know. We, we don't have any, well, we don't have too many genetic markers and there is no vaccine to delay it yet. Now, and obviously there are no treatments, which leads to the fact that Alzheimer's is diagnosed too late. Of course it's diagnosed too late. We only go to the physician when we see a behavior that is uh, different from what we uh, used to see from that person. Which leads to the uh, inability to develop drugs. Okay? So we want to promote the early diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Okay? So this part of the work in the lab is done by uh, Yaeli and Daniel, um, excellent students in the lab. Now, what are our uh, requirements uh, to de de develop a biomarker for Alzheimer's, okay? Now, there is one uh, 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 imaging compound being used in the or increasingly being used in the clinic to uh, diagnose Alzheimer's. Uh, it actually measures, using radioactive material compounds, uh, how much of that amyloid beta is in the brain, okay? If you have a lot of it, means that you're in an advanced stage of the disease. However, it is radioactive and it has disadvantages. Our biomarker, we aim it to be non-toxic, non-radioactive, of course non-invasive, we want to image the brain, we don't want to take a chunk of the brain and analyze it, and we want it to be not expensive. Why is it important not to have a radioactive compound? Because in the end of the day, The vision is that the entire population will be screened for Alzheimer's. Okay? Just as uh, women nowadays are screened uh, uh, using mammography, uh, uh, males are screened for uh, you know, colon cancer routinely at a particular age, there will be a point in which people will understand, that those that decision makers will understand that it costs less to screen the population for Alzheimer's than to deal with the outcomes later, okay? So this is the vision that the entire population eventually will be screened at an early age on a yearly basis for Alzheimer's. Now, if, if you rely on a radioactive uh, biomarker to, to, to screen using imaging, it forces those that want to go through that screening to be close to a major hospital which is itself located re relatively close to a you know instrument that generates those radioactive materials 
it's a big deal. It doesn't, it doesn't allow really a good solution. Plus, radioactivity by itself is uh, not good, okay, as we know. <coughs> so, what is the idea? In just in one or two slides of this particular biomarker, we, we, we generate uh, antibodies against amyloid beta, against this bad protein. We take a chunk of it that recognizes the protein, and with a few more tweaks, uh, uh, which are very difficult, it takes us years to do that, we, we get to a situation in which once we inject it into animals, and this is just a picture of a mouse, we can, we can see using imaging a signal in the brain that tells us that this particular mouse has high, high levels of amyloid beta. Okay? Again, this, this thing is being tested, uh, tested in mice, and, and we believe that uh, eventually, once we're done uh, developing it, it will be a very good tool to, uh, to screen the, the population uh, in a non-radioactive uh, manner. Now, we, we of course aren't the only lab that does these things. Many, many labs throughout the world are uh, having their own attempts at developing drugs, vaccines, etc. And they're doing their best work uh, at that. However, the two most beneficial and most ignored strategies to delay the onset of dementias, such as Alzheimer's, are physical exercise and environmental enrichment. Okay? These approaches were proven in the lab to do that. Okay? But they are the most ignored approaches. <laughs> Is that not crazy? <coughs> crazy it is. Let me show you uh, which uh, part of the brain, I hope you can see that. Maybe we can turn the light off. Anyone? Okay, forget about that. You can see. Okay, this is a mouse, a lab mouse. Now we're going into its skull. Okay. And within the skull, we will start to see the brain. It's the purple here. And within the mouse brain, we will now see the most important region for learning and memory, the hippocampus. Here it's on one side, here is the other hemisphere, the hippocampus. 